Okay, now let's talk about how this experiment actually works. What we're going to do is run electric current through two parallel uh, metal wires. They're very close together, and that creates a force between the two wires. So here, I've got these pencils are like the wires. So we'll have two wires fairly close together and parallel. The length will be how, how long they are, where they're parallel to each other. And there'll be a current going through one of them going one way. There'll be a current going through the other one the other way. And this produces a force. And if, if you use the right hand rules, there's more than one, you should be able to convince yourself that it's a repulsive force and the wires will push themselves apart. We'll actually apply a force to the upper wire to push it back to the same position. And however much force we push down is equivalent to how much force up the other wire is pushing by the repulsion. So let's look at this in a little bit more detail. Let me make some wires. I'm going to label the top wire I1, current, a current of I1 going through the top wire. And then um, the current on the, the bottom wire we'll call I2. And it's going in the opposite direction. Now, first of all, for the direction here, here's, here's, how, it, here's how it works before we talk about directions. Well, we will. Um, how this works is that the t we can think of the top wire carries an electric current, and a current creates a magnetic field. The current circles around the wire. It goes around in a circle. From, from a top view, can we do this? From a, from a top view, the current will go around and around the wire. And it gets weaker the farther it goes out. So um, the magnetic field, the current, causes a magnetic field which circles the wire. Now which direction? There is a right-hand rule. Be careful, there's lots of right-hand rules in physics. This is one of them, but there's not just one right-hand rule. So the right-hand rule for the magnetic field of a wire is you put your thumb in the direction the current is going and you curl your fingers around the wire and your fingers are like that magnetic field line so they show the direction that the current goes. You don't actually grab onto the wire because you get electrocuted. Ha ha. So that tells us the direction of the magnetic field and so here it's coming out of the page up above and here it's going into the page and it's getting weaker the farther away it is but it's going into the page and you can see for this wire there is a magnetic field going down into the page and now now we use the second right hand rule because now the the current I2 in the bottom wire feels a force due to a magnetic field that's a sec that's a separate rule so the, the current I2 experiences a force due to the magnetic field. There's a different right-hand rule for that force and the way you implement it is you point your finger in the direction that the current is going and then your other fingers are the field lines, so they go in the direction that the magnetic field is going. And so the field here is down into the page, so I will point my point in the direction of the, of the current going here, fingers down in the page, and then my thumb is perpendicular to both, and in this case my thumb is pointing downward. And so that is pushing away, and that's pushing the bottom wire away from the top wire. So two right-hand rules here combined tell us that it's going to be pushing down. Now you can do, it; it's totally symmetric. 
you can do the same analysis where the current, the current in the bottom wire creates a magnetic field here, right? So that's actually going down into the page up above. Um, and so that magnetic field due to the bottom wire curls around, goes into the page here. Now the current's going this way. The magnetic field is down into the page again. And my thumb is pushing upward. And so the upper wire is pushed away from the lower wire. So it's a repulsive force. Now I won't get into the details of the magnitude, but you can go through this um, analysis of the equations. Uh, this would be a derivation for what is the magnitude of the force. We've got the direction. And you will find, this is quoted in the book, I'm just giving you the result, it's in the handout also, that the magnitude of the force, F, is mu naught, the length of the wire, the amount of current in one wire, the amount of current in the other. They might be different. In our experiment, they're not. And divided by 2 pi times d, where L is the length of the wire, and d is the distance between them, and a key part of that is that it's center to center. And then mu naught is um, is a constant of nature. It's called the permeability of free space. It's a constant of nature. And in fact, a result of your measurements for this experiment are, is that you should be able to calculate the numerical value of mu naught and see how close you get, what, how big the error is, what, is it within your uncertainty. Okay, L is the length of the wire, so that would be length of the wires where they overlap. D is the distance between them, and we'll go center to center. And we need to know how to get that center to center distance. That's the idea for the force between the wires.